Hey everybody, your average Killing Bites Enjoyer Haku here with a review of uh, chapters 113, 114. So last month I didn't do a review because it was kind of a chapter where we got some combat stuff going on. So it's like, okay, the fight continued. The fight didn't end. So, so there wasn't really much to say for a review. So I was like, let me, let me give it another month. Uh, so I'm going to do a double review for the past two chapters. Um, I've enjoyed it. The fight has now ended. Was the Rio versus uh, Pure Fight my favorite in this arc? I'm not really sure. Don't really think so. Just because some of the previous ones have been so, so good. Um, but yeah, I still enjoyed it. I still thought it was good. So either way, let's start talking about, what, 113 first? Um, so yeah, we still don't get to see what happened with um, where we ended at 112. The uh, Ichinosuke and... Koyomi stuff. Um, so we don't get to see any more of that. We've we've still not seen how that ends. Hopefully he's okay. Probably is not. Um, but either way, Pure escapes to the roof of the crumbling school, uh, but shot to Skaru, um, and she stored a trampoline up there ahead of time, so no, or ahead of time in order to leap off the building for a huge, crazy aerial helm bites without the need for Nomoto's assistance or assistance, yeah, which was really cool, really awesome. I really just love Pure as a main character. It shows her plotting things out, thinking ahead of time, wanting to fight no matter what, and taking all of these aspects and things from other characters and getting inspiration from them uh, to continue and push on herself. So again, it was really good. We kind of just, that was the big thing for the chapter. Again, not much happened, which is why I didn't just review that, or this would be a less than three minute review, because she hits the crazy aerial helm bites. Uh, the Nomoto scene with her, like, picturing him as she does people when she's up in the sky is very, very, very good. Um, and her attack is able to bring Ryo to her knees, which is like just this big victory. She brought the mammoth to her knees, but at the end of the day, we end with the knowledge, and we start the next chapter, 114, with the knowledge that it's like, okay, she hit that big hit on Ryo, but Ryo's still a mammoth. It's still kind of hopeless, and now she no longer has the uh, ability to do that again. So, what we have here is pure hitting the last minute talk no jutsu. And what I really, really like about this is because so many times when people say talk no jutsu, it's an issue of the main character or whoever the character is, is struggling with this opponent and they start moral grandstanding at them. And then the opponent's like, you know what? You're right. But with this, it feels more calculated. It's a plan to win the fight. It's pure going, okay, physically I nailed this hit and now I need to use the devil's groan. I need to break her will to fight. It's a purposeful talk no jutsu. It's a talk no jutsu not just out of moral grandstanding at the person, um, but out of like legitimately trying to use your words to win the fight. Um, so I really, really like that. Uh, we get the, <laughs> we get more Beagle hyping up from the manga, and I, I just, I love, I feel like the series didn't start this way, and then, like, the mangaka at some point just fell in love with Beagles, got really into Beagles, and was like, I'm just shifting the entire focus to hype them up as much as possible, as often as I can, and I find it hilarious. I actually really love it. Uh, we have more of the Rio flashback, which to me, Rio and um, Shiozaki, Shinozaki, I think it was Shinozaki, um, their story's interesting. I need to go back and reread their first flashback, though, because I don't know. I'm just like, why'd she kill her like that? Why'd she kill her so easily? I don't, I don't like how easily she killed her in their fight. Um, but we have more of that flashback. We have the it's okay for you to cry now. Uh, the Devil's Groan is successful and Ryo's will to fight is broken. Uh, and we have it's your victory, Inui Pure, which feels like a callback to the it's your win, um, Nakanishi Yerza scene, which was, again, a really good scene. So either it's a callback and it's just two really good scenes, or it's two really good scenes and the, um, the mangaka's like, hey, I, I only know a certain amount of ways to, you know, draw or write these endings because the artist and author are different, I believe. Um, like, you know what? We only have a limited amount of ways that I know how to do this, so we're just doing the same thing again because it worked and was really nice last time. So now we're moving into the finale, and I 
do not really know what the finale holds for us. Uh, what I'm hoping for, I guess, if I were to say anything, like right now, Nomoto and Tutomi are totally still in play, I think. Um, of course, we've got the, like, big bad from the Zaibatsu or whatever, who is also a dinosaur, and we have the dinosaur apocalypse coming in. Um, and I think, like, uh, Leo and Tiger, they're still up, they're still having their showdown. I think that's where we left them, if I remember correctly. Um, I guess what I'd like to see, and what I'm afraid of, um, I would like to see Pure have her one-on-one -on -one showdown with um, Koyomi, and win Koyomi over, save Koyomi somehow, talk no jutsu, that's what I would like to see. Her win the fight without killing, I mean, if she kills Koyomi to win the fight, it is what it is, but her winning the fight and saving Koyomi, uh, because Koyomi was being introduced first with Pure, I think is the best case scenario, personally. Um, and having the other characters from throughout the series, all the other previous fighters and stuff, have them fighting the uh, dinosaurs and holding off the dinosaurs while um, Inui has her one-on-one -on -one with Koyomi. What I fear is Hitomi stealing the spotlight at the very last minute. I don't want us to follow Pure through this whole tournament and then Hitomi to jump in and take the spotlight at the very end. That's what I don't want because at this point I am more invested in Pure than I am in Hitomi. I like Pure more than Hitomi. Um, I just don't want the spotlight to be stolen right here at the very end. I think Hitomi, Nomoto, add in Ui, add in all of these other Erza, even though she's injured, all the other injured survivors from all the other fights have them fending off the dinosaurs, have them stopping the dinosaur apocalypse while we do get the finale 1v1. I don't want us to not get the finale 1v1 at this point. Um, even if there's other screwy things involved, because there almost always is, I want to see that go down. And it makes you question too, after we get this, after we get this finale, um, after the dinosaur apocalypse has ended, does that mean that Killing Bites is over? Is that the finale for the series as a whole? Or does, is that sort of another thing, like when we ended the first arc, and then we had this time skip and we shifted focus completely for the next two arcs, are we, or two or three arcs, I don't know how really you would count the second part of the story, um, but when we end this, are we going to shift focus to a new main character again and have more Killing Bite story? Which I would love because, again, average Killing Bites enjoyer. I am a I'm a big fan. Um, or is that just where they're going to call it a day for the series and end the series as a whole? That is, I guess, my question. Uh, but yeah, either way, I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll end it here. Thank you so, so much for watching. Like if you did like the video, comment down there to tell me what you thought of uh, this month's uh, chapter and last month's chapter, my review, all of that stuff. Uh, just, you know, we can talk down in the comments. We can talk on Twitter if you want. We can talk on Discord if you want. Uh, the sort of, uh, the server is free and open for anyone. Just ask and I can give you a link to it. Um, if you'd like to help support it or support the channel, help me keep making videos, you can drop a super thanks down below. It would be very much appreciated. Or if you want a shout out at the end of every single video, you can go to patreon.com slash aqua of the tubes or link will be in the description. Or also you could just hit join down below to become a channel member. Thank you to people who are already patrons and channel members. Thank you to Chosen Regular, Evan Holly, Magical Girls, FR Nono and Smeller Dog, Cherryton Student, David Langstaff, Slayer Candidate, SG and Pure Element, Pate Ardealo. Thank you all so, so much for your support, and thank you all so, so much for watching. Thank you so much, and I'll see you all next time.